addressing the tragedy at Astroworld featuring performer Travis Scott in which eight were killed and many more were injured, some seriously, it has to be classified for the most part as a great deal of negligent planning and execution. And probably worst of all is the news that Travis himself was being encouraged by a number of teenagers who hopped up on the stage to stop the concert because something really bad was happening and he didn't do anything. He continued to perform even as uh, all kinds of uh, terrible injuries and deaths were taking place. Now, if you look at his chart, you can see that the astrology is quite graphic in this case because he's on his Saturn return, and Saturn returns are seldom easy for anybody, and much less so when natal Saturn squares the Sun, opposes Jupiter, therefore part of a T-square, and we see that last month Saturn was stationary very near those degrees and we can also see that though Uranus is a little forward past that Sun in Taurus it's due to return pretty much precisely conjunct early in the year and this tells us right away that at minimum the psychology of the event is extremely difficult at the moment and the situation is very, very rough until, you know, well into winter, let's say. You can also add that transiting Neptune squaring Venus and also in a station in early December correlates with the tremendous blow to his popularity and to his celebrity. However, this situation also very much exemplifies something I often talk about, which is that people look at astrology and sometimes think it points to a rigid fate. And I often remind people that they should realize 10, 20 percent. It's, of course, very hard to come up with an exact number, but the number that you would assign to pure fate is actually pretty small. The majority of what we do is under our control. It's related to what we do, and then we get results. And because he could have acted differently in this case, he could have created a different fate, a different outcome. It wouldn't have been nearly as bad if he had realized that the safety of his customers, you know, of his fans, was more important than the continuation of the performance, and he didn't. So now, near term, he's looking at a really rough situation, but uh, on the positive side, if such a thing can ever even be spoken about in, in a tragedy like this, the degrees of his planets are fairly early in the fixed you know, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius. So we know that going into next year, Saturn and Uranus will move beyond these degrees. And so from that perspective, things could improve. Neptune too, it moves beyond that square goes further into Pisces. That's also good. However, if his moon, depending on his time of birth, which we don't know, if his moon happens to be uh, a very early moon, meaning he's born close to the beginning of that day at, at midnight, then that moon gets pulled back into the 24, 25, 26 uh, Aquari uh, pardon me, Scorpio degrees, thereby forming a conjunction with Pluto. And then that would mean that the Saturn Uranus traveling in the sky would hook into that moon Pluto in 2022 and 2023. And that would foretell a much longer period of recovery or even potential no recovery at all. And I'll conclude by mentioning some rather striking astrological correlations and triggers. Notice his natal Saturn in Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of groups. It's in a really difficult alignment at the moment, and groups are the very thing that you would associate with concerts of this type, 
a lot of people in a situation where something goes badly wrong and you can see that at the time of the event transiting Mars which is notorious for being associated with these kinds of accidents and these kinds of debacles was pretty close to precisely triggering the T-square from, uh, from Scorpio and if you take the three planet cluster in Scorpio and you average the degrees it's pretty much precisely where that Saturn degree position is which adds another element of, of precision into it in this case of course in a very tragic and very unfortunate way